How's it going YouTube? My name is Blake Yarbrough and welcome back. Today's video is all about Tom Sachs. We're not going to be talking about the wear test series that I'm doing today, but I am nearly done with the 365 days. We just passed day 300, so about two months left wearing these shoes right here. But today is all about the allegations that came out uh, in March about Tom Sachs, his studio, the workplace environment. Uh, described by previous employees. So we're going to talk about that. I'll give you some insight as to what I know about Tom Sachs. Um, I don't know him personally. I've never met him or anything like that. But I'll give you the information that I've gathered over time being a fan of his. And then we'll talk about the allegations and then my thoughts and opinions. So basically, I became a fan of Tom Sachs back around 2012 when he came out with the first Marjard. And that was my first kind of introduction to him as an artist. And because I like the shoe so much and the storyline and like his reasoning for creating it, the reason he used the materials he used, all of that stuff, um, I did a deeper dive into like his other art and just started really just kind of following along with his journey. And he's a very unique person. He pushes the boundaries on a lot of things maybe. Uh, not only in his art, but in just some of the ways that he lives his lifestyle. And I think I respect that because maybe there's some times where I'm scared to step out of my comfort zone or things like that, especially doing videos. I mean, this it took, it took a lot of time for me to decide to start posting videos on YouTube because it was out of my comfort zone. And so I think I respect people that are able to do that more easily. And he's definitely one of those people. So... He has a studio that's in New York, and that's like his workplace where he creates a lot of his his work, his art, and things like that. And he considers the studio art itself. And so he runs the studio. You can watch, I highly suggest you watch some of his videos on his YouTube channel that are, you know, 8, 10, 12 years old, um, where he describes like the rules of the studio. He calls them the 10 bullets. And... He had uh, the nice stats, they used to work for him. And there's a lot of videos of them doing interviews and podcasts and things talking about Tom Sachs. And they honestly talk about him in a very positive light. So this article is written and it's a terrible article. I mean, as far as the things they describe in the article, it's terrible, a lot of bad accusations. Um, and there's equal amounts of good representation of Tom Sachs, whether he's giving a speech um, people he's interacting with, people that are talking about him. So it you know gives you one of those mixed emotion things where it's like, who do you believe? You believe this article uh, or you believe like what you see, you know, out there in, in the other media. So definitely put me in kind of a weird place as far as like my own personal feelings. Um, it wasn't like I was going to quit doing the wear test or anything like that because that's to me, that's something kind of separate. Um, but as far as just being a fan, you know, kind of put me in a weird place. And so I've, I read through the article more than one time and I'll kind of walk you through like what I think about each thing. So the first thing that they really talk about is Tom Sachs and how he's very, uh, attentive to detail. And if you mess up, you know, in the workplace, he gets mad, calls you names, uh, you know, there's punishments if you make mistakes. And besides the name calling, which I think would be like crossing the line of employer, employer, employee, you know, boundaries. But as far as like having rules in place, it's pretty normal for a job. Now, how detailed those rules are, I mean, that's just up to the employer. I can't go to my job tomorrow morning and just do whatever I want to do. I think, you know, there's rules in place and I have to follow those rules. And if I don't follow those rules, then there are consequences, like I'll lose my job. Now, the consequences in Top Sack Studio is that you have to pay a fine. And, you know, the fine doubles each time you make the same mistake. And this is all according to videos that he's posted on his channel. So it's not like this article is uncovering secrets. They're really just... Uh, bringing to light maybe things people didn't know about him and so I encourage you to watch some of his videos I think it'd give you like a better understanding of like what he's trying to achieve because he's he's very open about what he wants and what he expects and 
I mean, if you're open about what you're expecting and somebody's, you know, choosing to go work there, then I don't think you really have a, a very strong platform to stand on to complain besides anything that crosses the line, like abuse or harassment, those kind of things. So the first, the first part of the article is really just talking about he wants you to, you know, feed his cat, feed his dog this many times a day. It's got to be this food. You got to remember this. You got to remember that. I mean, to me, that just sounds like they're complaining and maybe it, maybe it is really difficult, but you know, that's the job they signed up for. And so I don't really, I don't really feel too bad about that, to be honest with you, because if it's not the right job for you, then you just need to leave. Um, and again, I, I don't condone him uh, calling them names and things. Obviously, that's not cool. But as far as just having like a, a tough job description, I mean, then just don't work there. Um, and then moving down the article, uh, the next thing is kind of like that he was he would get mad and he would throw things around the studio potentially hitting somebody potentially causing injury and just based on like the amount of videos footage that i've watched of him doesn't really seem like that would be something that would be accurate i mean I'm not saying i don't believe him but he does talk about like getting mad and the cause and effect relationship of getting mad or angry or that sort of thing in the studio and i don't know I mean, I'm, I'm sure that he wouldn't intentionally want to harm somebody. That's just really hard to, to say about anybody, right? I mean, somebody wanting to injure somebody by throwing an object. Uh, but, you know, people get mad, people get angry, things happen. Everybody's got a different, you know, level of anger management. And maybe his isn't that great. I don't, I don't know him personally, but according to these employees, you know, he didn't deal with his stress or anger very well. And that's just, and that's something that like, obviously he would need to work on on his own. Nobody else can fix that for him. So um, then I think really like, this is the worst part of the article is towards the end where it talks about uh, these sexual allegations of him, one having a closet named the rape room. And then, which I'll talk about, and then uh, that he would often change clothes or not have clothes on while employees were there. And I'll talk about that second. So the, the whole thing about the closet, to me that word is like a trigger word and it's an easy word to like uh, over, over hype or uh, just really like the over sensation. I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but essentially like people can use that word and and it just draws a lot of emotion from people and so i think that's kind of what the article is doing to be honest with you because he said he named it that a long time ago which doesn't make it any better necessarily but definitely like vocabulary these days is over scrutinized in my opinion um people use words and is if the intention is there then it's worse if he didn't have bad intention with it then i don't see it as that big of a deal i mean it's obviously not cool and he apologized for it he changed the name of the closet all that so he obviously knew that it was a mistake but that word's been used in video games for years and years and years kids use it in video games which i'm not justifying or anything like that but that's something that i think people are, are kind of over hyping. Um, you know, he, if you watch his videos, he says like things that are tongue in cheek. And I think that's just like over hyped being over hyped in the article. Uh, and then the last thing is definitely the worst. I mean, I don't understand. He's, he's a good bit older than me. He's 56. And I think that generation, the older generation, and my generation and the younger generation, we each have like different views of like what's acceptable, what's crossing the line. And I think you have to have a certain understanding uh, of like that that's just how life is, people evolve. So he, he should have the, the realization and the understanding that like, hey, maybe this is cool amongst my peers and people my age and 
it's not that big of a deal but to this newer younger generation of employees of people you know they're not cool with this and so i think that's really like the disconnect is that he's lived his life in a generation where uh you could use vocabulary that's not maybe as accepted today you could do things act certain ways that that weren't cool you know it's not it's not cool it's not appropriate uh, maybe that's a better word it's not it's not a uh, professional but he's also running his own studio that you know he owns and so I don't condone any of any of the abuse or harassment that's being alleged in the article but at the same time it's his it's his studio so if he's not committing any crimes if he's not abusing people harassing people he can set up the rules of his studio honestly however he would like that's my it's ultimately my opinion is that it's his studio and if people choose to work there and they're and they're okay with it then then that's on them um and if they're not okay with it well then you just shouldn't work there um you might agree with that opinion you might not agree with it and i saw a billboard in atlanta the other day and it said we can disagree and both be right so i obviously don't condone any abuse or harassment it's just obviously uh i mean that just makes sense and i don't think anybody does you know but outside of that how he chooses to run it if it's crazy if it's a you know hard work environment i don't really have any problems with that at all um and then let's talk about nike so apparently the nike marjar 3.0 is supposed to come out later this year and then that guy retracted that got announced just a few days ago instantly got retracted by complex uh they interviewed somebody at nike and nike said right now at this time we're not working with tom's studio and we don't have any release dates planned so it seems like at minimum the whole Nike Tom Sachs collaboration is on pause. Makes sense. I mean, Nike has to protect their brand how they see fit. So while they may love Tom Sachs, they may love working with him and creating product with him, they're not going to risk their reputation, um, you know, over something like this. It's just not worth it for them from a business perspective, which I understand. And you know they're free to do as they please um i'll be curious to see like what else comes out about this and it seems like right now everything's kind of on pause tom's been posting some on instagram um and hopefully this all works out i mean the worst the worst thing is that there's people that obviously have had bad experiences and you know that's not something you want to see for anybody so i feel bad for them if you know they were either verbally or mentally abused or harassed um and i just ultimately hope it's not true because that means that those people if it is true then they had to endure like uh you know a crappy work environment and that's not fun for anybody so ultimately we'll just have to kind of wait and see if there's any more big updates maybe i'll make another video but this is pretty much just summing up my opinion and I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions for me, drop those down in the comment sections. Feel free to leave your own remarks as well. And with that, we're on to the next video.